Wes? Maybe, yeah, because we've got one here. I don't know. We don't have one over there. Yeah. Some of them have the oh, area oh, mic. Yeah, that's the area one. That's the area one. That's the area one. Okay. That's the area one. Okay. okay. That's one at the end. Okay. Okay, so I will call the meeting to order. Do I need to get a second on any of that? I have no, no, you don't. What's your name? Daniel. Daniel, I'm Chloe. Nice to meet you. Thanks for being here. Of course. All right, I will do the roll call. Do we have Carol Allen? Here. Woodrow Terrell? Yes, sir. Jenny Abling? <laughs> Shelby Staffinson? Here. Victoria Rizzo? Here. Twilla Harrington? Here. Mary Howell? Here. Chloe Cohen? Here. And Sarah Han Huston? Right here. Mm -hmm. Can you mark that the alternate Sherry Winters is here? Yeah. Just uh, write it down. Yep. Thank you. Was Jenny here last time? Jenny was here last time, yeah. Online. And she had oh, thought that the right. meeting was on the 8th, so she that's can't. That's right. Yeah. You recognize the mix up. Um, the next is public comment, but we don't have anybody from the public here. So I think we are ready to move on. Um, normally, normally we approve the minutes. Um, if I may. But we didn't really take minutes, did we? If I may, yeah. um, minutes weren't completed. They what? were got, got to me kind of late, and yeah. we're still in the process yeah. of. A, a, a changing to the monthly yes. meeting and uh, um, Teresa's absence. Yeah. So we will get those it's no problem. by yeah. next meeting. And I think I took some really awful notes, so uh, <laughs> we will not uh, worry about minutes for this time. Um, so we can move on to update notes. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. There we go. Is it on now? That's muted. What's red? No, red, red, is, okay. red, is, red is good. This is one of the rare situations where red is yeah. good. <laughs> um, well, I guess I'll just start out with a couple of updates and then I'll go mm -hmm. into um, the um, statistics for the month. Um, so as you see, I have a new person here with me. This is Daniel. Daniel mm -hmm. is joining us from the Corrections Division to help us out. Um, as some of you may know, Teresa hasn't been here for a while. Teresa is going to be off for probably a few months mm -hmm. taking care of some things. So in uh, her absence, Daniel is going to be helping us mm -hmm. out. So um, I will make sure that the chair has mm -hmm. Daniel's email okay. contact in mm -hmm. case there's something you should need. Okay. Um, and Daniel will be the one helping us out with doing the minutes. He, uh, he started with us as of yesterday, mm -hmm. so he's like thrown into the fire right, th mm -hmm. right off the bat. So um, that is good news for us because I couldn't keep up with everything that needed to be done that yeah. Teresa did. So yeah. um, other than that, I don't have any specific updates and I can go into the law enforcement report if you all are ready. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, as we mentioned at the last meeting, I have skipped over some months and updated to the most recent month inf month's information. So, the information I'm providing you today is for the month of July. Mm -hmm. So, might be the first time you've had uh, info that's not three months old, so that's exciting. Um, so, during the month of July, there was uh, 606 calls for service. Um, that's down substantially from uh, last month where there was 786 calls for service and it's down for the years previous year's average. So and looking over the calls to see where the changes were, it looked like in almost every call type there was a reduction in calls for service. So um, I don't know what to attribute that to if a lot of people are on vacation or mm -hmm. Well, what but or if the heat is kept more people inside mm -hmm. um, but there was definitely kind of an across the board reduction in calls for service mm -hmm. um, for this month for dispatch calls there was 293 dispatch calls and 313 self-initiated calls or calls 
where our deputies um, created the call, such as traffic stops, subject stops, things of that nature. Of those dispatch calls for service, 50 of those were priority one or two emergency calls for service, and 243 were priority three through seven non-emergency calls for service. Um, looking at the traffic accident report, basically what I look for in that traffic accident report, as I've mentioned before, is where we see um, patterns where one, maybe one intersection is having a lot of traffic accidents, so we can address that. Um, I didn't see any patterns. However, I did want to note that as we have talked a lot about uh, Buxton and Historic Columbia River Highway and that stop sign mm -hmm. there, um, I was saw that we had our first accident there mm -hmm. that I'm aware of at mm -hmm. least or that's been reported. Um, and I looked into it and although technically I suppose it was it was in kind of in the intersection. I wouldn't say it was exactly intersection related. It was honestly just bad driving. Mm -hmm. um, and somebody pulled up next to a truck who they thought was going straight and the truck was actually just doing that wide right turn that they put that sign on there to warn you about. Mm -hmm. um, oh, and yeah, I got caught they that. got <laughs> got clipped. Fortunately, yep. there was no injuries, right. which is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I did want to note that we do continue to get a number of uh, community complaints and concerns about that intersection. Um, I have asked Deputy Boer uh, to make that a priority. Um, and so he should be starting some uh, enhanced traffic safety patrol in that intersection and trying to help remind folks that there is a stop sign. I think probably part of the problem is people still aren't recognizing that you know, if you're going eastbound and turning southbound, that those folks aren't required to stop. So the westbound traffic coming is, is well, who are trying to turn mm -hmm. southbound also are confused by that. So I think we're still having some uh, challenges with that. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, that darn right turn permitted without stopping, it's pretty much a regular intersection. So I can only attribute the confusion mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, stolen vehicle report, a couple more vehicles stolen this month than the previous month, but we're well under uh, last year's average of 10.6. So, we had six stolen this month, four stolen last month. Normally, in July, we had, or previously in July, we had 10. So, we're still below our average. Um, Couple less cars recovered, a couple less vehicle, uh, stolen vehicles reported in Troutdale um, than last month, and about average for the year. For uh, traffic stops, there was 115 traffic stops made in the city of Troutdale in July. Uh, 88 of those were warnings, and 27 had some other resolution, whether that had been a citation issued, an, a report written, an arrest made, or some other resolution to that traffic stop that, that was not a warning. Um, there is, it, it's available for you in your uh, packets, but there is a update on any uh, detective cases that, that occurred. Moving on to the actual call log, Again, um, I'm always looking for patterns or something unusual that, that stands out. So there were a couple things that I wanted to address. Um, on uh, uh, July 3rd, there was a robbery, gunpoint robbery um, at a local business. Um, a report has been written and that case has been referred to detectives. So detectives are following up on that case. Mm -hmm. um, I think probably the big things that, that I wanted to mention were I'm sure you may have seen about the cougar sightings. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Okay, so um, cougar sightings have occurred. Um, ODFW is, is aware of that and they're posting signs. Uh, ODFW and the Sheriff's Office have done some joint social media messaging about that and uh, 
you know, we'll continue if we get a call for service to respond to that call for service related to a cougar sighting. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll also make ODFW aware if that's the case. Um, the other thing that was uh, newsworthy is the uh, stop sign vandalism. So mm -hmm. numerous stop signs vandalized. I think at the last okay. count I had was like 26 or 27 stop signs had been tipped over. Yeah. Um, so Deputy Boer is, uh, that has been listed as his number one priority to resolve mm -hmm. that because of course stop signs being missing yeah. is a huge safety concern for mm -hmm. the community. It's not just uh, fun, no. you know, kid fun vandalism, I guess mm -hmm. if that's fun. Right. But, uh, Excuse me, sir. Are they, um, are they taking the signs or are they just knocking no. them down? Just knocking them down. <laughs> Um, Can so, I, um, is it in a particular location um, or sort of centralized in a certain location? Um, it's primarily kind of up along Bus Buxton and some mm -hmm. of the surrounding neighborhoods, mm -hmm. but um, as, as soon as I think it might be kind of located in an area, we see that there's some that have expanded out. Uh, mm -hmm. We had one down near the airport, then we had one down on Halsey a ways actually into um, Wood Village. Mm -hmm. um, so they are kind of scattered out. We are looking at where mm -hmm. these are occurring to mm -hmm. see if we can uh, work on identifying locations mm -hmm. better based on that. Um, without going into too much detail, we are doing some follow-up with uh, potential witnesses and follow-up with people who might have cameras. Mm -hmm. So certainly if you become aware of somebody who might have some ring camera mm -hmm. or other footage of that, uh, Deputy mm -hmm. Board would be interested in that. Okay. So uh, we'll continue to work on that case mm -hmm. until it's resolved in one way or the other. Because mm -hmm. the not only is it highly dangerous, it's very costly for the city. Those signs mm -hmm. are about 500 bucks a piece. Mm -hmm. So uh, that adds up fast. Mm -hmm. um, those were the big things from the report. Um, as a follow-up thing, uh, I talked to, as, as you are aware, I meet with uh, City Manager Young uh, every couple weeks, at least every couple weeks. Um, and in talking about the red light cameras, which we touched on briefly at the last meeting. Um, he was willing, if you all are interested in coming and chatting with you about mm -hmm. that at a meeting. Um, he has a um, lot of years as a municipal court judge. Uh, he was our municipal court judge in Fairview when I was a mm -hmm. Fairview officer and we had red light cameras. So he's fairly familiar mm -hmm. with them. Um, that might be a good starting point if um, the committee is interested in pursuing a discussion on red light cameras. But if that's something you'd like to have him do, just uh, the chair, you can let me know mm -hmm. and I can reach out to him and see yeah. if we can coordinate him on one of your mm -hmm. regular meeting dates. Okay. Um, other than that, we have just a, a follow up on, we had some previous discussion on what you all would like to see as mm -hmm. far as statistical data. So I'm open if you have had time to think about that over the last month or so. Well, I guess it's been shorter than that because we had kind of a short turnaround for yeah. this meeting. But yeah. if you've had time to think about that, I'm open to hearing your thoughts on that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, that is all I have unless you have any questions. No questions, but um, I know last week and earlier this week, there's looks like there are um, teens, maybe older teens, that are trying to knock down signs over on Stark Street. There was three of them the other day huh. um, that I saw, and, um, and I, was, I didn't know what to do with it. And then there was two. About where at Stark Street was that, do you think? It was past Arthur Academy. So I want to say, like, East Road. Oh, Tottenham Road. Road? I can't do that. Okay. <laughs> so if you're, if you're driving this way, and Arthur Academy's on the right, it's like the next housing development. Just okay. Right there, that next stop. Well, that's fairly consistent with our area that has a lot of signs mm -hmm. knocked down. Mm -hmm. So um, 
So do you want us to, just to call it in? Do you want me to take a picture? I mean, um, I'm great at taking pictures. I'll probably have, maybe I'll have Deputy Boer come out and speak with you when he gets back next week. Just to get, <laughs> collect the information and, yeah. you know, we're trying to collect information from any potential source. Mm -hmm. So uh, any, we never know what piece of information might connect with right. another piece. So um, mm -hmm. I'll have him come out and meet with you. Thank you. Oh, and I did have one other thing before we move on, because last time there was a question about uh, alcohol in parks, and it was a follow-up on sugar pine in the park. Mm -hmm. And so I did, well, we did, he helped me out with this, do the uh, research on that, and it does say it is unlawful for in, no person shall bring into, possess, or consume alcoholic beverages in any park. Provided, however, that the director may from time to time allow by permit certain parks or park areas where beer and wine may be consumed in conjunction with a community event. So essentially, no alcoholic beverages in any park and also no glass containers of any type on any designated beach area or designated children's play areas. So just kind of a answer to both those questions about alcohol and glass containers in the park from last last meeting yeah you know down in Granado, do they have a no nudity sign mm. i was walking the dogs with my kids this weekend and um i've never seen one sunbathers down in the rocks yeah. a little awkward i <laughs> honestly i don't i <laughs> Like, I do not know, I do not think they have one uh -huh. okay. sign. So, um, you know, what, sometimes we learn things that we think might be common sense, and yeah. they aren't. So that's why signs are created. Right. <laughs> so thank you for letting us know. Nasty shock. <laughs> I have a question, front page that you gave us. Uh-huh. If I just draw a straight line from the most, uh, from like 2023, the topmost number, and just kind of straight across that overall prior to like i don't know july there doesn't seem to be an august there of 2021 uh reported but um going back that way almost all the numbers end up being higher so overall we've had a lot less reporting calls for are you looking at the dispatch calls for service, which is the bottom? Yeah, the bottom one right down there. Uh huh. Do you have any idea why that would be? People just not calling and you, in. And you're saying that the dispatch calls you interpret to be higher between 2021 and 2023? No, lower. Oh, lower. Um, just like a huge amount, it seems like. I mean, it's hard to generally say and how we can you know it's kind of like trying to put a metric behind how much crime you prevent yeah. but um you know i would imagine that when you look at dispatch calls for service generally speaking that includes everything from a priority one emergency call to non-emergency calls so i think there's a few factors that we can uh, attribute number one we are at full staffing in 2023 we weren't at full staffing in 2021 so there's a lot more proactive um, police work occurring there's a lot more visibility of law enforcement um, we're working a lot more of the enhanced public safety missions so there is a lot more police activity just generally um, and self-initiated police activity going on than there probably was in 2021 um, I think the other thing we need to keep in mind is that call wait times for dispatch, particularly for non-emergency calls, have gone up substantially in the last few years. That's what I wonder. So we may not see as many calls on here because these all represent calls that were created by dispatch. Now we also have online reporting, which we established online reporting to kind of um, balance out the fact that call wait times were so long. So this doesn't represent the number of calls that may not happen because they reported online. Oh, okay. So we do also have online reporting. 
where we may miss some of that, those numbers based on that. So I think there's a lot of factors at play. I think one is, you know, having a fully staffed sheriff's department where there is a lot of uh, sheriff's cars out all the time reduces some of those crimes of opportunity. So people aren't calling to report because there was a lot of car prowls or things like that. Um, but I also think that we need to consider the fact that some people may not be calling because they don't want to wait for 60 to 90 minutes to report mm -hmm. something that, you know, their bicycle being stolen yeah. or things like that. And of course, that, that is specifically for non-emergency calls. The emergency calls are still mm -hmm. going through um, quickly, but, um, you know, people might not might not be worth it for them to wait and that's why we put the the uh calls uh, the online reporting in just so people still had a mechanism is there a way to, for us to see online reporting numbers yeah i can absolutely ask for our folks who manage that to start giving me numbers that are reflective of a call that initiated in trout Hill. okay so mm -hmm. Sir, um, is there a way to identify um, calls that came from Troutdale, but maybe they hung up before they got a, an operator? Or that's not a question I could honestly answer. Mm -hmm. I'd have to have somebody from Bowick answer that question because I'm not sure when the call starts being tracked by them. If it's you know tracked after they, you know, it connects, mm -hmm. or if it's tracked just by. The ring, so I'd have to mm -hmm. look to Boek for an answer for that. You know, I'm sorry to uh, kitchen sink a lot of these questions, mm -hmm. but I have a few right now. Um, so the red light cameras, um, I've been in Trout for a year and a half, two years now. Mm -hmm. um, prior, previously, um, the town of Gilbert had a combination of a red light camera, but it also was a, was a switch so that emergency vehicles, if they were coming, it would, I know that they were on their way, and they would switch the lights to oh, yeah. the, the emergency vehicles. Is that something we're also looking at, or just the red light camera function only? I think at this point they were really looking at the, well, the, the suggestion was that the uh, committee look at the red light camera. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So mm -hmm. it's honestly up to the committee to decide mm -hmm. what you all want to look at. Because I think it would just, there was a, there was an improvement in response times, mm -hmm. especially with EMS. Sure. So, um, and then we talked about a little bit about uh, data. Um, I'm looking for maybe just to see if there's any demographic information about vulnerable populations. So we talked about some of the, um, the call, the call types. Is there a way that we can identify anybody that was very, very young or very, very old? You know, and again, I'm sure we could define, go into de greater detail to define what a vulnerable population would be, but I think it would be perhaps helpful to be able to pick out if we saw a number of calls that were kind of targeted towards seniors or, mm -hmm. or very, very young kids. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that's even a So I'd have to do some looking into that. We don't generally, mm -hmm. like, because we service all calls exactly the same, regardless mm -hmm. of a person's, any uh, mm -hmm. identifying factor on a person, we don't necessarily collect like that type of data. Mm -hmm. The one exception to that is our HOPE team collects data about their work with uh, individuals experiencing houselessness, mm -hmm. just because they have some statistical requirements mm -hmm. for the, right. the Board of Commissioners. Um, so I can provide data as it relates to our houseless community mm -hmm. members, um, but I would have to do some asking of our statistical wizards to find out if there's ways to kind of pair out that kind of data. Now, I can tell you that, you know, we can look at if, um, you know, like, so if there's a call that's specifically related or called in as a juvenile problem, for example, that is something that where the statistics people can pull that data out based okay. on the fact that mm -hmm. it's a quote unquote juvenile problem. And mm -hmm. that could mean anything from a, the juvenile being the problem to the juvenile having the problem. Um, but outside of that, 
it would probably take somebody hand going through all mm -hmm. reports to like identify yeah. those um, kind of those metrics that you're looking mm -hmm. for out of the report. No worries. And again, it just see if it was right over that. I don't. I'm, I'm sure we'd need to um, have a, a different conversation about whether to authorize the the deeper dive. Sure. But uh, again, I think you know, my background is more on vulnerable populations, and mm -hmm. so that's what I'm talking to about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One more clarifying question around the red light camera. Sure. Um, because when we've looked at the traffic accidents, I haven't seen anything that says, wow, that's going to fix a problem in that mm -hmm. area we discussed last time. So I'm just trying to really understand more the purpose. Was this more of looking at it as kind of a revenue stream? Because I think that has different, you know, equity kind of implications, or was it yeah. truly? I, I never look at at any traffic enforcement as a revenue stream. I think that's a terrible way for law enforcement to look at right. traffic enforcement. Um, I think the, uh, the, as the city looks at it, they're looking at the increase in traffic, particularly in some areas like uh, Columbia River Highway and 257. Mm -hmm. We know that to be a dangerous intersection because of the number of near misses and things like that. So. You know, we could, one of the things that the, the committee could ask for is like, if you wanted to look at specific areas and you wanted to say, how many accidents have we had in this specific area over a specific right. time period? Like that is data that I could get mm -hmm. for you. So if you wanted to know how many traffic right. crashes at 257 and Columbia River Highway, I can mm -hmm. get that data and provide that to you. So yeah. I think that would be a better metric than looking at these monthly because it's kind of hard to keep track of what right. was, right. you know, was there one there four months ago and I'm not yeah. remembering it. So I think it would be better just to provide you, let's narrow it down to just that. And I, know, I haven't looked at the traffic accident reports today, right? Perhaps like a root cause or something that they think may have um, contributed to the collision. If they're issuing a citation because uh -huh. there was a violation that caused the traffic crash, then it will probably be in there, mm -hmm. or we'll see that a citation was part of that report. So usually if they have, if there was something that they could identify that was a clear violation that caused the accident, we'll see in the clearance codes on their report that they wrote a citation. So we could probably even narrow that down more to ones where somebody wasn't issued a citation and was issued a citation. And that doesn't necessarily mean that there wasn't a violation of the, or a violation that occurred. It just means that the deputy didn't have enough evidence to say and write a citation for that. So um, it's a little bit misleading data, but at least it gives you kind of a rough idea. Mm -hmm. um, just going off of what you said about one of the adults, does and so have uh, a specific, like a, a unit or a team that investigates elder crimes or vulnerable adult cases specifically? Yes, we have an uh, uh, elder crimes uh, detective that works in our detective unit, and they manage any case that is reported to deputies where elder abuse is suspected, whether that be financial or physical abuse. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have um, child abuse investigative detective as well. So we manage all those as well. And I had hoped to draft uh, dashboard items before now, but so I think I think this dashboard is going to be the key. You know, what the what data do we need to? You know, um, the main thing that I want to do though also is when we talk about like the mission and stuff. I would like to track data that's actually going directly at like our charter so we're not getting sort of because like the the red light camera thing I think could pull us off of mission pretty um, heavily for a little bit so I would want to make sure that we're not um, losing sight of the the mission but it might be that it's something that comes down the road you know mm -hmm. but that's my um, so I really want to move this dashboard so you guys are not reporting on stuff that yeah, or taking the time to pull stuff that we don't actually need or does not help us do our job, you know. So, um, so that was gonna, that'll be one of my recommendations um, 
for a little bit later in the agenda, sort of some action items between now and next week. And just as a clarifying point, I just want to make it understood that I am neither a, an opponent or proponent of red light cameras. Yeah. I am just a resource yeah. if you all are interested Absolutely. in in information, further information yeah. about red light cameras. Absolutely. Yeah, and it might be that, I mean, I think about like, because um, one of our charges is, you know, is um, ensuring that public safety. So like if we do identify there's an intersection that needs it, you know, it'd be nice to, to move on that. I could imagine some other safety issues that we could, like all the drunk driving at certain times of night, you know, those mm -hmm. kinds of things. <laughs> sure. Uh, but um, so that'll be great when we can get to that point. And then we can do actionable um, recommendations and gathering information. So I'm excited for the day we get to that. <laughs> yeah. I know I'm concerned um, about people who are running red lights all the time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'll be at a light and I always watch before I even move, but then I got people honking at me because I ain't moving. Yeah, yeah. And then I've got two or three cars going in front of me just passing, mm -hmm. just blatantly passing the yeah, yeah. red light. Yeah. And so um, I'm wondering if you guys are noticing that as well? Oh, mm -hmm. absolutely. I mean, I drive around in a regular yeah. car too, yeah. and I see the exact same things. Um, now, obviously, we don't see that as much when you're in a marked car, yeah. but, um, you know, we certainly would address it if we see it, and mm -hmm. it's safe to do so. We don't ever want to create a larger hazard by trying to stop somebody that yeah. just right. ran a red light than the red light caused, or yeah. red light running caused. But, yeah, we absolutely want to address those issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's terribly dangerous, yeah. Yeah. and a lot of people, mm -hmm. honestly, a lot of people get hurt by getting t banged oh, no. and high-speed right. crashes. Because I see it a lot up here at the Safeway intersection on 257 mm -hmm. from Stark. Yeah. Yeah. They do that almost every day, I, you know, I'm dealing with that. And right. so um, I'm just, I know that that's a, another area where crashes have occurred. And so. Yeah, and that's kind of a weird to... intersection there too, because part of that's Gresham right. and part of that's Morgan that's County. So it depends, like we, can write citations depending on which direction people are oh. coming from and where they're oh, at in the gosh. intersection. So it's kind of a challenging one. Yeah. Not to say that we can't manage mm -hmm. that, but yeah. it just is a little more challenging when we write those citations just because mm -hmm. it changes the venue where that trip right. ticket would go. I have just another suggestion concern about the bus intersection down there or down here um why isn't maybe rubber stop signs and i know eventually they do come off but they were be more visible because i visible because i think people still want whatever tunnel vision i think they see it down on the road stop versus something mm. over here or something i can tell you that um, Mr. Young and I have talked about various, including those, but also doing some of those. I'm sure you've seen like those stop signs with the LED lights and yeah. things like yeah. that. We've looked at, uh, or we've talked about other options. I know Mr. Young has reached out to County Roads to talk about mm -hmm. alternative, alternative ideas on how to make those stop signs more visible. So I'll have to follow up with him and see um, what he's found out. My impression is that he hasn't had a lot of success. Um, so I know that there was concerns about cost with the LED type stop signs. And that's probably particularly concerning now that we've had 26 stop signs knocked over. Right. But um, I know there was some concern about cost on that, but I'll follow up on that with Mr. Young and see if he has any mm -hmm. additional information. And another concern that I heard from um, someone was on, um, they said it was Harlow downtown, is a one way mm -hmm. going to the Columbia River Highway, right? Okay. So going down the street, so and you want to either turn right or left, when cars are parked, you cannot see. Oh, are you talking about cars, cars on Columbia down, River Highway? Yeah, and, but you're down there, Harlow, and when cars are parked on the Columbia River Highway, mm -hmm. you cannot see, especially right. if you turn left, onto CRH to, yeah. 
Who does our, who, who maintains our street signs and all of that? Most of is the street our... signs would be the city. Oh, it is. Okay. There are county signs mixed in there, so it just yeah. kind of depends on where it, where it is. I know. Like most surface streets will be city, city signs. But the highways probably the highways county. Highways yeah. will be county signs. I've had to deal with this a lot in downtown Portland where I work, and we, we have to ask them to remove spots all the time mm -hmm. because it's just that they're so dangerous. But we use, like, we have PDOT, so I don't know if, if we, if that, if this committee wants to work on traffic safety might be that we come up with like a bunch of recommendations and maybe city council takes care of that mm -hmm. first. That could be that could be a nice little subgroup. The and I think safety. when you talk about the the visibility at an intersection, I think one of the things that the city might have an option to do that wouldn't impact signage, even mm -hmm. if it's not, you know, it's county owned signs is by um, you know, expanding the distance that's no parking like along that mm -hmm. curb line yeah. because I think that can be sometimes the problem where you have cars that are parked too far up to the intersection yeah. and that eliminates especially if they're a big tall truck yeah. or something like that so yeah. maybe looking at the potential of can we expand mm -hmm. where we allow parking along yeah. can we afford uh, less parking in trout and that's oh. that's the balance yeah. right yeah <laughs> Yeah. I was going to say that the, um, on 282nd near Chase Road, when they put in the stop sign there, they put in bumps on the road. Oh, yeah. But I don't know, that's a faster road, so maybe it wouldn't make a difference on the 20 miles through Troutdale. But that's another mm -hmm. idea might get the driver's attention. Mm -hmm. To kind of, oh, my goodness, the stop sign yeah. there. The rumble strip, yeah. So bumps in the road or something. I mean, not speed bumps, but a little bump. Yeah, those are good. Turtles. Turtles. Mm -hmm. Turtles. Turtles. I think, yeah, I think they call them turt turtles. So turtles, unusually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I've had some other streets where we've had to put them in, mm -hmm. like corners and curves. And yeah. I think it's one of the greatest things they did on highways, putting in those rumble things yeah. on the edge, get those drivers that are drifting off. Yes. Yeah. I think that's. Right around. around. Yep, you know exactly. And so they were wondering how they did speed bumps. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it sounds like we need a traffic safety subgroup. <laughs> well, I say I wrote down the safety. last like six comments about yeah. traffic safety yeah. issues, so that might be. Yeah. Especially because um, that's what my hope is like to, you know, get really clear what our vision is and then to sort of break up into smaller groups on things that people are passionate about because I think that's more powerful and effective maybe. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, certainly traffic safety is one of the big, biggest things that people experience, right? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And I think um, in me talking to people, though, that seems to be what it, yeah. you know, it yeah. just seems like it, a lot of it is. Yeah. 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 I also think it, it wouldn't hurt for people to go and complain to the city council. Because mm -hmm. I tell mm -hmm. people all the time, go to city council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, yeah. I'm on a committee or several and, you know, they, they can hear me pound the same thing all right. the time. And it gets old from mm -hmm. Carol. So, yeah. I mean, we need yeah. somebody else to come down there and start talking. And yeah. so I try to keep telling people, go to city council. Yeah. Email your counselors. Yeah. They are responsive yeah. to emails. Well, email yeah, seems much. to be a very, very good way to get everyone's mm -hmm. attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and if I may, I think that city council would would mm -hmm. look at your committee mm -hmm. as kind of that that in between. So. Mm -hmm. 
you all would be the place where people would bring forth their yeah. concerns about public safety and yeah. then you all have the opportunity to do some research on that and yeah. see what the, where to prioritize that concern mm -hmm. and at what point and in what mm -hmm. format to bring that to mm -hmm. council. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that'll take us to that. We've talked about surveys and community outreach and all of that. Yeah. So we can help people make it easier because if there's any barrier, I find people often will just give up really easy. Yes. It's like, oh, I can't do that, you know. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, let's take the barriers away. Any more questions about the, the about the statistics in the report? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, so the next and like I kind of well, we should follow the. We should follow the agenda, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, the mission statement, did everybody get a chance to read that? I'm hoping I got one feedback and it was only the addition of one um, word to our values and it was just integrity. And I was like, absolutely, let's add that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was Jenny. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm so glad. Yeah. So does anybody have, because I am hoping that we can um, vote on this tonight. If everybody feels like they've gotten a chance, did you receive it though? I did, and uh, or just today? The, the Are you just oh, receiving no, it? No, I got okay, good. Few weeks ago, but my, my question is: yeah. we've received a report from the chief, mm -hmm. but when do we hear information mm -hmm. about EMS and medical? Yes, exactly. So part of um, part of what this is sort of establishing our purpose and making it a little more clear, and then from there setting goals like strategic goals because very much the fire EMS and emergency planning. There's a lot more that encompasses and we're we happen to be in this building. We've got a, a sheriff representative, but we need um, we need to know these other these other services also. So that's very much in the um, once we once we get this established and then because um, I think the dashboard that we create, I think we're, we need to ask for the, the report from all of the agencies that we contract with. So I think that um, I imagine they'll be pretty similar, be common data that we have on, we ask for. So yeah, we haven't heard from um, fired in a, I think a year. It yeah, came at one point. Yeah. And, and then never from the um, the EMS people. Yeah. yeah. And then my question is, mm -hmm. I thought I saw something that their rates were going up. Didn't you say last yeah. year that they were going to go well, up? Well, there's a negotiation of the contract and who is who on this group? That's you. Okay. We're meeting next Tuesday. Next Perfect. Tuesday. Yeah. And you're looking next at Tuesday. the fire? For Wednesday. Yes. Fire. The, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. 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 So, so we need, um, you know, I mean, I think of it kind of like we're customers, right? Like yes. we need to know, like, and maybe the council gets it already. I don't know. So there's just going to, I imagine there's going to be a ton of questions that come up. You know, what's available? Are you already sharing this? Just sort of getting the information flowing, you know? And we'll definitely ask them. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Meet. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. I don't know where the, I don't know where this fits. Yeah, in. yeah. But again, because I'm new here, so like <laughs> I have a, hopefully I still have a little grace period where I can sound stupid and nobody judges. You have forever <laughs> grace period. But, yes. um, but uh, again, I'm again I'm a Boy Scout oh. and I do a lot of Boy Scout stuff. Yeah. And we put we used to put a lot of kids through the Explorer program. Mm -hmm. And I don't I don't think we have the the troop in Troutdale um, has merged with the troop further south. And mm -hmm. so it was a natural pipeline to send our Eagle Scouts to the Explorer program and let them go on to the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the post training for law enforcement. Mm -hmm. We used to have a ton of officers that were former Eagle Scouts, oh, yeah. local kids. Yeah. And the same with fire. Yeah. And I last information I saw online was that you know, Gresham had a fire class and they extended offers to like 12, 13 mm -hmm. people. And only like six or seven showed up at the mm -hmm. academy, and I'm. Mm -hmm. We we do have a pipeline. Yeah. There are kiddos out there that, you know, mm -hmm. when with the alarm sounds, they go to help people. Yeah. And um, I think we just need to work a little bit together, and mm -hmm. you know, allow them some opportunity. So I don't yeah. know where that fits in, yeah. in our charter or not, but. Well, I don't think it fits necessarily with our charter because it's sort of a, it's more of like a recruiting and it is overall safety for sure, but it's probably better to connect the agencies directly with the, the troops, you know, because we don't need to be middlemen in that per se. But that could be a great thing if you could meet the fire people and the Absolutely. sheriff people and 
and make I those can, connections. I can share with you that although we don't have a uh, uh, explorer program, we mm -hmm. do have our search and rescue volunteers, which mm -hmm. is made up of young people. Skilled, yeah, too. yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, they go through some some pretty uh, deep training Absolutely. to do that, and mm -hmm. so. We do stay involved with our youth. We've historically done a youth academy. Um, when COVID hit, we stopped doing it for a while, and then we battled some of the same challenges every other agency did with staffing. So we haven't brought that back yet, but I anticipate that being a goal in the future to bring back our youth academy um, because it was a great opportunity for for young people not only to see if they're interested in law enforcement but to get to know law enforcement in a little different way mm -hmm. yeah. does anybody any other any feedback on the mission do we are we missing good. yeah and then do you guys have any feedback on this side we've already looked I at it a few times yeah yeah so then the goal so I wonder if we can just go ahead and vote on it. Yeah, I can make a motion okay. to, to adopt. Um, adopt this mission statement, okay. uh, values and vision with the addition of the integrity. Yeah. So Twyla motion. I'll second it. Carol second. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Yay. So now what do we do with it? Yeah. Do I send it to? <laughs> Does it go on our website, on our web page? Yeah, maybe that would be great. Let's check with Sarah, Sarah and see what okay. the best next steps are. Perfect. I've been sending, she and I have been sending a lot of email back and forth lately, so I will send. Perfect. So then from here, now that we have our, well, so we can close that agenda item. What else is on here? Uh, next meeting date is the 7th, and um, I sent out all the dates, and I think that we, I guess I have to, I'll confirm with Sarah. I sent out the full year dates. I can't remember if I sent them to you guys. I think I checked. I think I checked and then Teresa said, you know, we might need to learn the equipment and such. Um, but I guess I'll, I'll check in with Sarah to make sure they're all calendared. So then you guys can have them all for your, but it's the first Thursday of every month. So, so we're on for the September 7th meeting and then consecutive first Thursdays. I know, I know, I don't know what it's not what it's about. Okay. And then, so committee member comments. I don't know if you guys want me to continue or if you, what feels better for, do you guys want to do comments first? I just got a whole long list. Do your thing. <laughs> okay, so now that we have our mission adopted, what I was hoping between now and next meeting is that we, um, so that was one of the primary goals was to adopt this mission, which feels good that we've done. Um, now is to sort of, I was between now and next meeting, if everybody could bring maybe like three strategic goals, because that's that's kind of, um, you know, how we meet mission is is really through goals setting and um, usually like three is good because it's achievable but in terms of goals hopefully they can be specific specific and measurable goals so things that we can know if we've met them or not you know like um, you know making Troutdale a safe city would be something we couldn't I mean we potentially could but it's super broad right and it's already like a really safe city maybe making Troutdale safer would be our goal but um, so I'm hoping that you guys can bring those strategic goals to next time and then also bring um, bring items that you would like to uh, somebody to come and report on. So like I already have fire department, EMS, emergency planning. Um, Do we have an emergency planning? Yeah. Yeah. So we that's what we talked about. It'd be great to be able to because actually I don't know anything about the emergency planning and I've lived in Troutdale my whole life practically. So um, so it, so also if you could bring topics that would be of interest that we would like to learn about, because now that we're doing them monthly, it might be that we can um, we can kind of have something on each agenda that's like a learn something. I'd also love to bring back the DEI person from the sheriff's office because she was so helpful. Yeah. Oh, she's not there anymore. Oh, geez. No, we have a 
We are uh, actually in the process of uh, selecting oh, okay. a new person Perfect. for that. Okay. Um, but we do have some people that were subordinate to her yeah. that are involved in Perfect. that that we can also involve yeah. too. Well, and also, like before we invite people to um, present or ask for information, it'd be really good for us to uh, be clear about what we would like to hear too, you know, sort of making an ask that's detailed so it's, you know, so they are not just like coming and reporting on whatever or trying to figure us out right we don't want them to have to do that work um, so those are the two action items all for the dashboard sort of reporting i'm going to commit to drafting that and sending it by email between now and the next meeting so we can have that on our agenda for next time and i think that's all i have yeah wait is there anything else nope that's all so who else has comments? Committee comments? We could just go around if you want to start, Mary. If you have any uh, committee member comment. Not at this time. Okay. What you touched on is a great start. Okay. I just want to clarify, you are a new member? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. I'll know when it gets to be my turn. I'll I'll speak yeah. about myself, okay. try and limit to a minute or two. Yeah, we haven't done, we didn't do formal introductions. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. What? We have to remember to do that. Yeah, maybe next time we next, can yeah. okay. We can share out a little bit. I just want, well, and I, I don't know if we'll have an updated um, directory at some point. I bet I bet that's in the works, you know, because I'm sorry. An updated directory for the committee or a committee roster or whatever. Yeah, we can talk to Sarah. About yeah, she, she I mean, it's not it. like it's urgent. Right. I'm just more curious where everybody lives, so no. Because <laughs> we learned that we all live near each other. They, so. they, they sent me, when I, when I got the letter Did saying that I was appointed, then I have a roster of everybody. Oh, you do? Yeah. Oh, so it yeah, already exists. Oh, it's online now, okay. I haven't checked since last meeting, what so. Our addresses no, not our addresses. No. No. Yeah, that's like an internal. No, 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 I, that, mine and everybody's addresses. Yeah, but on the website, it doesn't. Yeah. It was in current. Oh. That'd be weird. <laughs> I don't think we listed that. Yeah. I know it was missing my email address. Yeah. So. Well, w one way or another, by next time we'll yeah. get we'll make sure we know where okay. we and then it'd be fun to yeah. It's always nice to get to know people a little more. Okay. Twilight, do you have any comments? Um, I just want to thank you for your leadership. Oh, thank I really you. think we are like getting to mm -hmm. what our vision is and um, mm -hmm. I think with that we're going to do some great work and I appreciate your report out of the yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Victoria, we're glad you're here. <laughs> so, as I said in the last meeting, mm -hmm. Ray's willing to come and talk about that emergency. Plan. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And we're doing it with um, Fairview. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So and he's willing to come yeah. and talk about health it's working. I think that'd be great. Um, and everybody, when you're thinking for next week, do we want to do? And they already did National Night Out on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. um, do we want to do one next year? Mm -hmm. And I can talk with Molly help coordinate that yeah yeah i think we should just commit to that right do you, well i guess does that involve your time national night out mm -hmm. okay so i guess we we yeah if you want if you say yes <laughs> we don't want to commit you to something if uh, if you all so i will if you have a moment, I can speak to that yeah, if yeah. you would like. Yeah. Um, Do you guys so, know about National Night Out? It's like the, yeah, you all know about that, right? Yeah, I know about it. Didn't know it was happening in Troutdale. Oh, yeah. Next year. <laughs> Hopefully. So one of the challenges for the sheriff's office is that, generally speaking, National Night Out's one day, and we have four yeah. contract cities. So right. um, we have yeah. worked on that over time. and. Mm -hmm. uh, so Wood Village does theirs like the week prior to that. Oh, they call okay. it Wood Village Night Out. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, you know, our involvement is kind of based on how many of our contract cities are doing right. it all the same night. Yeah. Right now, Maywood Park and Fairview do it on the official uh -huh. National Night Out Day. Yeah. Um, so that limits our ability to have all the cool things at all the places. Yeah. So. Um, that's what I would keep in mind. If that's mm -hmm. something that you guys uh, choose to do, mm -hmm. if you, we'll figure out how to 
Oh, to get that there, good. and we have a, uh, a community events deputy who mm. is wonderful at coordinating National Night Out. But mm. um, I would definitely consider the definitely. impact of doing it on the actual yeah. National Night Out day, yeah. just because of, it limits our ability right. to support you all. Yeah, yeah, and National, I've been in touch with them kind of off and on. They don't let you call it National Night Out unless, unless it's on, you do it on the exact day. Yeah. But I think another day is fine, and mm -hmm. it doesn't even have to be that month. Right. You can even alter it to September right. or something. Yeah. Um, which would be fine. Yeah. It's a little cooler. Because there's so many going on right. in August. Yeah. So. And that gives you guys a break. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> It'd be really nice to like on already on my list of things that I want for the the goal setting is community outreach. So it'd be nice for that to be kind of wrapped into like a community outreach um, plan, because I think the more we can be in touch with our community, even a couple nights or you know, and a couple times a year. Thing mm -hmm. we can think about: Do we want to do it with one of the other communities? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There, there's also some businesses that are required to participate in some of these community type events. Mm -hmm. So I know that JCO and DNV are mm -hmm. specifically looking for the hospitals that have partnered with communities mm -hmm. for doing preparedness, night yeah. out. There's a whole slew of what our emergency mm -hmm. managers would have to do in the mm -hmm. different communities that we have hospitals in. Yeah. So yeah. There, well, that happy. gives them a, a huge incentive to participate. Yeah. And then we also get to know some of the different, you know, mm -hmm. hospitals and clinics mm -hmm. are nearby. In September, I almost took yes, my daughter to in it. October. <laughs> um, Mount Hood Hospital always had a big event. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's emer September's Emergency Preparedness Month, yeah. Yeah. And, and October is Cyber Cyber Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. And it sort of went by the wayside, so it'd be nice yeah. to get it, and mm -hmm. maybe Mount Hood it, would let us have it there. It's an yeah, easy. Columbia mm -hmm. Park. An easy check mark for them to get huge points with their with their surveyors and auditors mm -hmm. nationally. Yeah. So if we can partner with a, a business yeah. that has to do it anyway, yeah. it's a no brainer for them. They're like, yeah, dude, check check this off our box. Yeah. So perfect. Do you have anything else, Victoria? No. I just want to thank you all for being here. I know. Um, Everybody's super busy, so thank you for being here and being excited about this work. And um, I'm going to send some emails to you between now and the next meeting. So, yeah. You promise? Yeah, I mean, well, I also have my stupid 50 hour a week job, but whatever. Yes. Now you're bragging. Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, uh, I do promise, yes. So and I'm going to get your name on there. I don't know if I have your email, actually. I might have you write it down. Okay. Because I have looked for it, and I wasn't able to find it. Okay. So, yes. Sorry. And you can also comment. The, if you have it's comments. not on this list, either. No. No, I know. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. We'll but I am. So. I promise I am. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not just showing up for five <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We know you're <laughs> I, was just, I received paperwork on it. So. Yeah. Um, I think the only thing I was going to make a comment mm -hmm. on, which is just a little bit of tie-in to mm -hmm. parks, yeah. and that's just oh, yeah. that we're we're looking at um, reviewing some leash or dog issues yeah. in parks, and so I feel like with safety, and I feel yeah. like there's a little bit of a tie-in and yeah. recommending on an ordinance or yeah. something. So yeah. Anyway. And we, I had, I had passed along your question about, um, but it was, it was so, it was too last minute. But maybe for the next meeting, I talked to him come. about Perfect. it. Actually, Perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's all. Okay. I think that's much more usable. Yes. Yes. And welcome to It's good to be here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Same thing. I, I looked at this and going, it's July. So I'm so thrilled. Yeah. So thanks Thank for doing you. that and having it really up to date for yeah. us. And 
having this meeting. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks for yeah. coming and of course. Mm -hmm. being the note taker. That always <laughs> works. Yeah. And I will Glad add, you. if you if you don't mind, mm -hmm. that um, I know I apologize that you didn't get it till the day of. Oh, no. With the meeting this <laughs> yeah. close to the beginning of the month, it yeah, takes them a little bit of yeah. time. So I'll try to make sure, yeah. you know, depending on what day of the month it is, that it gets as close or gives you as much time to yeah. review it ahead of time as possible. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, good to be here. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. me. Um, and. Chief, nice to meet you. Mm -hmm. Thank nice you. you as well. Mm -hmm. And I uh, look forward to contributing and helping and making Troutdale awesome. Yeah. Do we have a canine uh, unit in down or no? It, mm -hmm. it, it, the sheriff's office? Yeah. yeah, we have two We have two patrol canines. Mm -hmm. We have a narcotics detection canine and mm -hmm. three or four um, explosive detection canines that work in our transit division. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And we're working on a um, like a compassion canine that oh, would oh, go nice. out. Oh, that's so, sweet. <laughs> yeah, we're working on that. So it's not a Belgian; it's a, it's a fluffy golden. Yeah, it would be oh, a nice, oh, nice awesome. lovey dovey so dog. Sweet. So like tag. Yes, exactly like oh, tag. So, so um, so I came from Gilbert, and uh, Gilbert created a dog park specifically for their canine units. Oh, cool! Oh. It's uh, the Cosmo Dog Park. I'm going to send you a link to that, but it has all the obstacles and things that they train their dogs mm -hmm. on there and of course they only use it you know every so often so then you have people with their goldens and collies out there <laughs> trying to talk them through a window or something <laughs> it's really kind of funny but that's it was cute. It's, it's a neat little thing to do for the community yeah that's so. sweet well thank you for your partnership i mean absolutely the, this is a big uh and thank you for the willingness to sort of work through this i mean i feel like we we're like are we a couple years in like yes. we're kind of getting our feet under us and like so it's your partnership is really helping yeah. get us there so i'm really excited really to see the, the mm -hmm. movement forward yeah. i think that's going to be yeah awesome for you yeah. is there any other boys going to come to these meetings or am i am i the, the token boy i think you're it yeah yeah, yeah. Right now. For now. Is getting community. yeah and the part of the the community outreach too and also yeah like i feel like um diversity of age race gender like all the diversity It'd be great to have a young i mean sorry i'm not saying how anybody's not young but <laughs> it'd be nice to have a young person because you know we we know, only know what we know right i mean i have a 17 year old and um it's like we're living in completely different worlds practically you know so i think you still oh, know more than him <laughs> yeah what is it i think you still know more than yeah. 17. <laughs> oh yeah definitely but what she knows about what's going on too she probably knows who's knocking down the probably. i would imagine you know <laughs> or she could find out rather quickly yeah. so oh, you yeah. know they they're the source of all the they know Honestly, everything yeah. right yeah <laughs> so last year we had a class of from around five. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I that was fun. Yeah. So it'd be good to yeah. So I'm seeing this community outreach ideas. Be, it could be a really uh, big work mm -hmm. and really um, maybe the heart of what we're doing. You know. Yeah. So. And if you want to connect with the high school, mm -hmm. I think you're going to need to go through Mike Anderson, who is the principal. Oh yeah. But there's the leadership class mm. that oh, is yeah. run by. Couple teachers. I know yeah. um, Bailey is one of them, but yeah. you'd That'd have to connect with the office and then reach that, out. That from might there. be cool. Do we know if Reynolds has resource officers on yes, site? Yes, we do. And is it are, are they from the county or is it yes. something there? Okay. Yeah, we have two uh, resource deputies assigned to all the Reynolds school district schools within mm -hmm. our service area. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. um, they are shared amongst the schools based out of the high school. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I think I will call to adjourn this meeting. Do I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I want a gavel. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> To bring you a big old hammer. <laughs> it's done. Or I'll like mic drop. We should just yeah. all knock our mics out. Yeah. Just. Yeah. Yeah.